Welcome to Nurses Voices. This season, we are focusing on nurse-led solutions to the current nurse human resource crisis in Canada. Our guest for this episode is leading a quality initiative focused on facilitating hospital discharges on weekends. This nurse-led initiative highlights how improving communication and closing system gaps improves nurse, patient, staff, and physician experience. Welcome, Jillian. Jillian Kazinka is a registered nurse and clinical operations director at Vancouver Island Health Authority in Victoria, BC. Thanks for joining us, Jillian. We're looking forward to hearing from you, and perhaps you can start by telling us what the problem was and how your discharge planning initiative addresses the problem and helps solve the nursing health human resource crisis. So the problem being increased capacity in our hospitals and a reduced workforce. So how do you marry the Delta together in terms of uh, caring for our patients in a way that uh, we are trained to do and provide a patient care experience that is something that we're all proud of. So we set about as a team, and I do really want to emphasize everything in nursing really is a team sport. We have innovation within ourselves as nurses from our training and our work experience to really put some innovation to identifying gaps in the system, but also coming up with solutions. We set about designing through quality improvement methodology the problem being is our hospitals are full, our nurses are overworked, staffing ratios are challenging. Many of us leave work feeling some moral distress about the level of care and the experience of our patients. So the solution to that is to have less patients in the hospital. The weekends are a challenge for us in the system. We try to run a seven day a week service in five days because many of our service providers are Monday to Friday. We immediately identify an opportunity to facilitate discharges on our Saturday and Sunday. When Monday rolls around, we therefore are in a much stronger position to provide quality, safe care and service to our patients that are coming in for elective surgeries, for example, manage our emergency room volumes, et cetera. If we reduce our hospital capacity, we improve our patient flow so that all the parts of the system work better and our patient experience is better. So coming at it from a very patient-centric approach, applied some quality improvement design methodology to clearly determine if we designed a different process for Saturday and Sunday. Could we achieve better discharge results so that our families were reunited, our patients leave our hospitals? So all of the harm indicators that being admitted into an acute care system, we reduce. So we're not just talking about satisfaction. We're talking about patient well-being and safety and opportunities to improve on all of our metrics. Measurement is so important. We need to have a starting place and we need to have a finishing place and then determine if our actions have made a difference to the staff experience, to our nurses on the floor. Because if we are reducing our hospital capacity, the staffing burden, because we have less patients, we improve our team experience and we improve the level of moral distress that our workforce is feeling when stretched simply too thin. To get down to some detail around the Quality Improvement Initiative, we engaged our coordinator of site operations. It is a leadership position in our nursing team. We designed a workflow that incorporated review of patients that could be discharged prior to Monday so on a Thursday afternoon, we would identify anybody who could have a discharge possible in the next 48, 72 hours. That information was collated and passed on to our coordinator of site operations, where she visited each and every one of those patients throughout the entire 
350 bed hospital, um, spoke with physicians, spoke with allied health, social work, PT, OT, really facilitated conversation with family to ensure that we could facilitate an earlier discharge and really expedite that process by improving the communication between disciplines and then really applying expert nursing knowledge on how to solve discharge problems in the moment. This was acquiring equipment. This was ensuring that unique transport was solved so that we could get our patients home. To build on the quality improvement methodology, round one was very onerous in terms of it was myself and my director colleague who would call in every Saturday and Sunday for a period of six weeks where we would try to really bring the team together in terms of communication and optimize our opportunities within the building. And we did see some opportunity when I actually had the coordinator of site operations in the building, having eye-to-eye conversations with our teams, facilitating physician networking on the Friday and the Monday to ensure that the continuum of that conversation happened and that patient need was transferred throughout the disciplines, we were able to really move the lever on our weekend discharges, which is very in tune with our strategic direction. We have a primary principle here at Island Health where we have our patients being cared for in the right place at the right time by the right people. This is simply an opportunity for us to not have a patient stay in an acute care bed for the weekend because our system gaps have not been closed. The right care for that patient is not in an acute care bed if they are well enough to be cared for in a home environment. So really building on that right care, right place by the right person, we were able to fundamentally close gaps, improve communication, And from a data perspective, increase our weekend discharges by 10%. 10% equates to many, many, many bed hours and much opportunity for a, an acute care patient to be moved through the emergency department into a surgical bed. If a surgical patient move a medical patient out of that surgical bed so that you're having the skill set of the nursing staff that is related to your diagnosis because so much time now is spent deploying our nurses so that we have an equitable approach to workload and ratios. And that really does place some nurses out of their comfort zones in terms of being orientated to a space, orientated to a skill set or a workflow. And so that adds more and more layers of moral distress to our workforce, which is contributing to depleting the workforce. So it really is in line with ensuring it's not just about right care, right patient, but it's also taking steps to really care for our workforce that we know as employers that we have to do. We have to put some steps in place that our nurses feel safe and our nurses feel equipped and tooled to do the work that they are trained to do and that they have signed up to do. Many of our workforce now are engaged in activities that they simply didn't sign up to do, and that is causing further depletion and attrition in our workforce. So the project is seeing increased communication and increased satisfaction of both the team and the patient and family. And our physician partners are so important in this. How a physician workflow is designed is sometimes dependent on their capacity. And as in every other discipline across the globe, our physicians are really struggling with workload as well. And so having a point person to cut down on either phone calls or reaching out to numerous people, the physician feedback of the project was very positive as well. We simply have to resource this project ongoing. We have clearly determined that there is a huge opportunity to explore the seven-day-a-week service for our acute care hospitals in Victoria. Jillian, that was 
I, I'm just so intrigued with the innovation um, that, and that it is nurse led and it is multidisciplinary. What I'd like to know if I was in a similar situation, how did you mobilize the external supports that need to be in place to make that possible for someone to be discharged? Because we uh, identified those patients during the Monday to Friday component, so it was on the Thursday, so we had the ability to reach out to for equipment procurement or to our community health service partners, uh, to our social work department. So we were really setting ourselves up for success for continued work on the Saturday and the Sunday, where historically our networking happens and and many of those processes are in place, but there's just a stall component for the Saturday and Sunday. And then our nurse coordinator of operations was able to really just keep all of those balls in the air until we managed to get that patient safely discharged. So the work started during the work week when many of those Monday to Friday services uh, were, were in place. When you tell us that, I think to myself, well, that makes so much sense Uh, as, you know, I mean, a lot of these nurse-led solutions, what we're finding in nurses' voices, they make a lot of sense. Shifting the conversation or trying to get the resources from a Saturday to a Thursday. Um, So it just takes someone to look at this uh, with a with with a critical lens to say, could we do it uh, better? I'd be then interested to know, what are the nurses saying? Well, the nurses are tired and the nurses are really looking for some hope. Hope comes in the form of not working in such a cluttered, uh, cramped environment, having a colleague that has a skill set that can back you up. Many of our uh, expert nurses during the pandemic, our demographics have changed a lot in, in our nursing workforce. Therefore, our novice to expert gradient is, is very steep on the floors. So having the traditional how, how I was trained, where I had a mentor uh, for a, a long period of time, I had somebody that I knew I could go to and ask all of those niggling little questions to ensure that somebody had my back and could point me in the right direction. Many of our workforce now simply don't have that. I'm hearing a lot in our forums and in staff meetings through our uh, leadership team that sometimes the mean average age of post-registration is two years and some of our folks are in charge of very busy, very full medical surgical units at two years post-grad. And that was unheard of in my day. I really feel that it's our responsibility to ensure that we're providing an environment that feels much safer. And really fundamentally how we get to that is efficiency in our patient flow and really focusing on having our patients in the right place at the right time and having really clear, good conversations and being very transparent about where our challenges lie. We as operators, as leaders who are nurses, really remain very focused on the environment in which our nurses work in, in terms of safety, growth, development, mentorship, ensure that it is more broad reaching than simply moving a metric on a dashboard. It does and must have a human component and that human component is not solely patient focused, but also our workforce. The environment will get better to work in if our hospitals are less cramped and crowded. Julian, this is so inspiring because I know there are many nurses who are going to be listening to this episode in the same seat you're in, wondering, how do I manage this situation? And I think the presentation has just given so much inspiration, ideas, concrete strategies on how to deal with one facet of this current crisis. I speak for my fellow nursing administrators that I don't think any of us wake up one day and go, oh, 
I'm going to be a really great nurse administrator. I'm going to be a, I'm going to be a hospital administrator. You just don't think you'll end up here. But what's so vital is having nurses in positions like this that really keep patients experience and our fellow nurses experience centric to the work that we do and to ensure that we can advocate for each other. Thank you. And I want to say you've talked about administrators, but what you've articulated is what leadership looks like. You can watch any episode of Nurses Voices from our first two seasons on a variety of platforms, including YouTube and Apple Podcasts. Subscribe to our channels to ensure you don't miss any of our new episodes, or go to our website, nursesvoices.ca, to sign up for our free newsletter. Nurses Voices is generously sponsored by Pfizer Canada. It is created by Donner Wheeler and produced by Sector Limited. It is supported by the Canadian Nurses Foundation and the Canadian Nurses Association. Mm-hmm.